With the release of Stardew Valley 1.6, it is time to talk about all of the new changes that we can be thankful for. Before we delve into these fantastic changes, if you have one minute to spare, just hit that subscribe button, it'll really help me out. I've got loads of new subscribers over the past couple of weeks, just want to say thanks so much everyone for subbing to the channel, it means a lot to me. More Stardew Valley content is coming, including a 200 day continuation from our 100 day video. How many of you have entered the mines or the Skull Caverns unprepared only to get knocked unconscious? You wake up later on in the day to find that all of your valuable items have now been taken away. Well changes have been made to ease up on players that aren't so great at combat. You now only lose up to 3 items when you get knocked out and that's basically it so you don't have to worry about losing half of your inventory and you can no longer lose infinity weapons to go in sight or any of your farming tools. What's more, you can even get a really cool book of power at the back of the Adventurer's Guild and that can reduce the cost of item retrieval by 50%. So you can now go into the mines or Skull Cavern with your head held high and you don't have to worry too much about getting knocked out inside there. Everyone, we can now rejoice. The fabulous Geo Crushers no longer require coal to use. That's right, you can complete some community quests Get the Jira Crusher recipe and you can crush as many artifacts as your heart desires without the use of coal. This is going to make Clint quite redundant mid to late game when you start getting hundreds of Omni Geodes and other stuff from during Skull Cavern runs. It's a huge quality of life update that I totally welcome. Foraging has gotten some really nice updates. You now get the cookout kit at Foraging level 3. This used to be level 9 originally and it kind of defeated the purpose of getting it at level 9 because by the time you get level 9 foraging on most farms, unless you do some hardcore foraging in spring, and a lot of people don't, by the time you get that cookout kit, you already have the house upgrades. But now we can get it so early. And if you start on the Meadowlands farm, you even start with chickens. You can cook up some eggs every single day that you wake up, and it's great for early energy and health. The cookout kit is a huge game changer. We could even do specific challenges now, like with 100 days as a chef. The cookout kit can be deployed in most zones. A great way to use it is when you're fishing and you need some health and energy or you need to get prepared for the next day. You can just bring out a cookout kit, put it on the ground straight away and start cooking up to your heart's content. As long as you have the ingredients, you can absolutely cook it no problem at all. If we take a look at the cave carrots and the winter roots here, you can make a root platter. That gives you a plus three to your attack power and inside the mines, a plus three to attack is huge you make shot rock of enemies no problem. You can even cook up fish and turn some fish into sashimi, which is really nice. It's also profitable on certain fish. It's going to be very interesting to see how people use the early cookout kit in future challenges. I can't wait to use it myself. We're now going to talk about the great changes that have been made to the slime hutch. That's right, the slime hutch has now been reduced in size. It's only 7x4 tiles. It used to be a whopping 11x6. What you see here is the original slime hutch. It used to be a massive building altogether, now it's much smaller and it just looks way better in my opinion. Because it's so small, in my opinion, you should have at least one of these now in your farm. Because when you put down a slime hutch, you unlock a new ability to farm slime eggs from slimes when you fight them. Now it is quite rare, but when a slime egg does drop, it does sell for a lot of money. Even the common green slimes, those eggs sell for a thousand gold. That's very nice indeed. The great thing with slime hunches is that you can breed slimes inside them and you can get tons and tons of slime back. There's lots of things you can do with slime, but primarily you want to put these into egg presses and make lots of slime eggs and then sell those for huge profits. Because the slime hutch is now so small, I'm actually really motivated to make another 100 days as a Stardew Valley slime rancher, just to see what I could do now with the smaller slime hutches. How many could we squeeze into a farm? There's been really nice changes made to how jelly and wines look. So jelly and wines are now coloured based on what fruit or veg were used for them. So they now look way better in my opinion. And it just adds a lot more flair to the game. A lot more creativity. Especially when you want to do up a really nice looking farm. Let's take a stroll into our other sword shed. And I'll show you what the jellies look like now. As we can see we've got lots of different coloured jellies. They all look really good. It just goes to show how much passion concerned ape still has for his stardew valley now the aesthetics doesn't stop there 
He has added so many updates, it's just so hard to put them all into videos. We're going to talk about the new catalogs next. He has added tons of new catalogs to the game. We have got the Trash Catalog, we have the Junimo Catalog, the Retro Catalog, the Georgia Catalog and the Wizard Catalog. And all these catalogs are packed full of brand new items we can put around our farm, we can put inside our house. They're all just so amazing to use. What we have here now is all of the catalogs stacked up together. I'm going to use each one in a different room just to show you very briefly what each of the catalogs look like. So as we can see there, we have the trash catalog. This is the Georgia room. Look, I know a lot of people hate Georgia, but look how good it looks in all fairness. I think it looks absolutely amazing. All of the cool Georgia furniture. This is just more proof that Concerned Ape really does love Georgia. Otherwise, he wouldn't be putting this amount of additional Georgia content into the game. You've got safes, couches, lights, you've got really cool stuff you can hang up on the walls. The trash catalog is actually one of my favourites. I just love the broken telly, the tattered couch, the bottles on the ground. It reminds me of the kind of house you would expect if Shane and Pam lived in it together. That's the kind of combination you'd, you'd have there, in my opinion, of course. But you are, of course, welcome to your own opinions. Let me know in the comments what you think about all these changes. I'd love to hear from you. If we take a look at the wizard catalog here, we even get a really cool cauldron. We have all of the mystic books that the wizard reads. We have the bookshelves. It just looks absolutely awesome. We even have a door there that looks like a real door, but it's not. It's just a decoration. If we go up here, we have the Junimo catalog. If we take a look at the, the wonky looking mushroom tree decoration there, we have the really cool bed, the cozy fireplace. It just looks absolutely amazing. We have the little Junimo huts as well. It just looks so cool. The amount of farm tour videos we're going to get from these is going to be insane. Loads of people now are going to redo up their farms, including myself. I'm going to release videos for all to see and how creative you can now get with Stardew Valley. Finally, the insect head has been buffed. A lot of people didn't use the insect head because by the time you have all of those bugs killed, you had a weapon much better than the insect head. But Concerned Ape has reduced the amount of bugs needed to actually unlock that weapon. You now only need to kill 80 bugs. This is down from 125 to get the insect head. Not only that, but it's also been buffed damage wise. It used to do 10 to 20 damage. Now it does 20 to 30 damage. It's now a really nice weapon. And if you find yourself struggling in the mines early on and you need a good weapon, you can always just farm the insects now and actually grab that insect head. And that would actually do you for the first 120 levels. No problem at all. It's a fine weapon. After inspecting thousands upon thousands of ores, Clint has now leveled up. Clint can now multitask. That's right. Clint can now process your geodes while he is upgrading a tool. This is an absolute game changer. Let me know in the comments if you're like me. How many times have you went to Clint? You have hundreds of Omni geodes from doing a really good Skull Cavern run. You're looking to finish off the museum, or you're looking to get specific minerals that you need. Maybe it's a marble for a brazier, maybe it's a lemon stone to give to the dwarf because he loves those. But Clint will not process them for you, because he's upgrading your tool and you have to wait a few days. That's a thing of the past now. You can bring him geodes anytime, even if he's upgrading tools, and he'll break them all open for you, no problem at all. So Clint is now much more useful than what he used to be. And of course, it's not just geos. He will break open anything for you. He'll break open mystery boxes, gold mystery boxes. He'll break open those lovely golden coconuts that you can get over on Ginger Island. Clint can do it all, folks. Maybe now Clint will have the courage to finally tell Emily how he feels. You can do it, Clint. We believe in you. And finally, for the last change we're going to cover in this video, it is absolutely amazing. Another big buff to foraging. You now get foraging XP from bushes. Finally, I have been hoping for this for so long. It is now absolutely worth your while even more to go around during the salmonberry season, the blackberry season, and just wipe all those bushes out. You will get foraging XP every time you click on one of those lovely cozy bushes. And last but certainly not least, you will now get farming XP along with foraging XP for harvesting all of the forages that grow on your farm from the wild spring, summer, fall and winter seeds. Now you don't get a whole lot of farming XP, but if you have hundreds of about hundreds of forageables, it's going to make a big difference. And I think it's going to be really cool to see what kind of combinations we can pull off with this in the future. 
So I just want to say thanks again to all my members for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. And I want you all to stay tuned for the 200 day Stardew Valley Challenge that's going to drop in the next day or two. It's going to be an amazing video. Thanks again everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next video.